We have journeyed to the central part of Japan, to Nara, to their national park. And this is a beautiful place. There's deer here that is really tame, and you can walk up and pat them on the head. They have no fear of man. And then there's children playing everywhere in this park. Families have come here. And today, I'm seated here with two gentlemen that have made history. We've read their names and their experiences in our history books. But more than that, you're going to hear one of the greatest stories of love that has ever been told about the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ, God's Son, and the love of the precious Holy Spirit that changes our hearts and changes our lives and makes our world a better world in which to live. I'd like for you to meet these gentlemen today. First of all, Captain Ferchita. He was the commander and the man in charge of directing the flight and the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Then here also with me is Reverend Jake DeShazer. Jake DeShazer was with General Doolittle and a bombardier that flew over Japan and bombed Japan for the first time. I want you to hear their story, and we're going to have more to say about that, but first of all, I would like to talk to the captain I'd like for him to tell us where he was born and something in his background before Pearl Harbor. Captain Fuchita, God bless you, and tell us about your childhood. My name is Mitsuo Fuchida, a former Japanese Navy captain, but now I am working as a Christian evangelist. I was born in 1902 in this place in Nara Prefecture. When I was three years old, the war between Japan and Russia broke up, and this war ended in victory for Japan. Influenced by this victory, I aspired to be a military man. I was a very strong-minded boy and never once lost my vision. When I graduated the high school, I enrolled to the Japanese Navy Academy and started to be a naval officer. When I graduated from the Naval Academy, I joined to the Japanese Naval Air Force. Then, 15 years passed, I became a most experienced pilot among the Japanese Air Force. No? Hence, oh, at that time, I made a flying hours, 10,000 hours. You know? That was a lot of flying hours. And I was the most experienced pilot in the Japanese Navy. Hence, I have chosen as a general commanding officer to attack on Pearl Harbor. The year was 1941, and that day was December 7. I was leading the whole Japanese aircraft, you know, uh, about 316 planes into Pearl Harbor. And having seen the American Pacific fleet was at anchor in the bay. I gave my first order, which was all squadrons plunged into attack. And then that Terbrua was opened in the Pacific. We're going to come back and talk to you more in just a moment. But I want now to talk to an American, a man who was in the United States on December the 7th. Let's get some of his background. Jake DeShazer, tell us your background. Where were you born? Well, I was born in uh, Salem, Oregon, and I was raised over at uh, Madras, Oregon. Uh, my uh, stepfather raised me. Uh, my father died when I, he, I was only two. My stepfather had a big uh, wheat ranch, and uh, he was a very godly man, used to pray every morning and uh, would read the Bible uh, tears would come down from his eyes as he'd pray. But when I got to be 19 years old, I rejected the uh, teaching of my parents. And I felt like uh, 
there's nothing to show me that uh, this is any more true than any other religion. And the, how can I accept Jesus Christ when I don't know who he is or anything about him? And so I went out and uh, tried to get me a job, but it was, I graduated from high school in 1931, and uh, it was depression time. And so finally I ended up in the United States military service as an airplane mechanic uh, working on the B-25. And um, by the time uh, Pearl Harbor was bombed, I was taking training to be a bombardier. I was on KP duty that day that Pearl Harbor was bombed. And I thought, a man, those Japanese are really going to have to take something for this. And uh, there was anger in my heart. And then, a uh, short time after this, uh, I was asked if I would volunteer for a dangerous mission. They wouldn't tell us what it was. But uh, uh, the captain said that some of us fellows would be killed. And uh, that's how I got on the uh, General Doolittle raid over Tokyo. They put uh, 16 B-25s on a 100 aircraft carrier because that was the only way that J Japan could be bombed. Um, the planes wouldn't fly much more than six hours at that time, and uh, so they had to fly off an aircraft carrier to get to Japan. And uh, 16 airplanes came, 11 of them went to Tokyo. They um, dropped their bombs, and uh, uh, then we flew over to uh, China. And we'd had to go 10 hours early because a Japanese patrol boat showed up out there uh, when we were 800 miles from Tokyo. And uh, that made us go uh, too early, and it uh, made us uh, get to China after dark. We lost every airplane. All 16 airplanes were lost. And um, one that I was in was uh, over in China around the Shanghai area. It uh, ran out of gasoline. The pilot said, we'll have to jump. So um, I jumped out at 10.30 at night over in China. And it was really something. I was a country boy, and here I was over in China. Uh, my parachute worked all right, but the next morning, I was picked up by the Japanese. And um, I spent uh, 40 months in a Japanese prison. There was eight of us fellows captured. Uh, Doolittle and most of the fellows got back to America. Uh, three men were killed on the raid, but um, the rest of them all uh, got back to America except us eight. And uh, they wrote this book, uh, 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. They made a movie, and uh, they dedicated the book to the eight men who never came back. My name's the last one of that list of men that never came back. But this is me. I'm really here. Uh, they uh, didn't uh, know the whole story. And uh, us eight fellows were captured in China. We were taken back to Tokyo. And um, uh, then we were questioned for 60 days. And it was very severe questioning. It angered the Japanese very much because we bombed Japan. And uh, three of the uh, fellows in, when we were taken back to China, uh, three were executed. And uh, after two years, another fellow died from malnutrition. And so uh, after this fellow died, then the uh, Japanese prison officials changed their treatment. And we asked them for the Bible, and we begged them to give us something to read because we were sitting in solitary confinement, and um, we were pretty discouraged. But um, I got that Bible finally, and I read the Bible clear through. I had it for three weeks, and uh, I thought now is a good chance to find out who Jesus really is and why the Christians think so much of him. And I started writing it at the first, and I found out that um, there's prophecy about Jesus way back when Moses was on earth. Moses said the Lord himself will come. He was talking about Jesus. And then Isaiah and all the prophets had the same idea. Jesus is coming. And then in the New Testament, it said he was in the world and the world was made by him. That's who Jesus is. He's the creator. And they knew he was coming. And he was here uh, nearly 2,000 years ago. Oh, that made a tremendous difference in my life when I realized who Jesus is. He's God Almighty. And when I found that out, I began to pray to him. And about uh, 
uh, 10 days after I started to pray, I was sitting on my stool, and it was 8th of June, 1944. And my Bible, I had been reading this Bible, but I laid it down on the floor. I looked down there, and it said in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Well, you know, I knew those conditions were met in my life. There's just two things, and they were met. And I just felt like uh, weeping and crying. I knew that God saved me. God can't lie, and he promised I was saved. And then I knew what my mother had been talking about, and all the Christians, and I felt like, oh, they were trying to tell me, but I didn't realize it. And I knew that that was uh, God's plan for all mankind. And then before... Uh, 14 months later, I was released from prison. But before I was released, uh, the Lord showed me that the thing to do with my life was to go back to Japan and tell the Japanese people and tell Captain Fujita and all that I could reach that Jesus Christ is a creator and he was here and he died for our sins and made it possible for us to have eternal life. Reverend DeShazer, we're going to come back to you in just a moment. And Captain Fertitta, we're going to come back to you in just a moment. But I want to pause here and tell you that the most powerful force in all the world is not the military power. It is the power of love. Love that comes when we receive God into our life through Jesus Christ, God's Son, and our only plan of salvation. I would like to proceed with this story, and you tell us what you did when you came back to Japan. Oh, when I got back to Japan, I, uh, I was met by the uh, newspaper men uh, before I got off the ship. I didn't realize anyone knew I was coming, but uh, someone said, is Jacob DeShazer here? And I said, I'm here. And it had come over the loudspeaker, so they said, go back on the ship. We want to talk to you. I went back inside. And here, it was a cold day in December, uh, 40 newspaper men came, and they said, uh, what happened to you? They said, uh, we know all about uh, prisoner war of Japan. They said, uh, there were lice and bed bugs, and uh, your companions were shot, and one fellow starved to death. And they said, uh, uh, they hit you and kicked you. They thought I got hit on the head a little too hard. And I thought, well, they're newspaper men. They even knew when I was coming. But uh, they don't know the news that happened about 2,000 years ago. So I thought I'd better bring them up to date. And I started in telling them about Jesus and about his resurrection. And I said, he's coming back. And Japan better get ready. Because someday Jesus is going to appear. And every eye will see him. And I said, you better accept him as your savior. Well, those newspaper men... Uh, didn't know what I was talking about, I guess, but they put something in the news, newspapers. And then uh, for three months at least, there was a man in our home every day from the newspaper office asking uh, about uh, something that uh, we had done or telling some event that they saw. They, we had one child, and uh, we saw our picture on the front page of the Japanese newspaper many times. And... Uh, the Japanese people said, come on, we know you're a Christian. A Christian is supposed to forgive. A, pr a Christian is supposed to love. And they said, you're, you were a prisoner of war, and you're showing love and coming back here. We want to hear you. So I had a chance to go all over. I had a good interpreter. And I told thousands of people about Jesus. You built churches. You told people about Jesus. And now we want to change and talk to Captain for Cheetah for just a moment because you had printed in a leaflet your testimony and what Jesus Christ had meant to you. And that testimony fell in the hands of the captain. Would you tell us really what happened and how you come about knowing Jesus Christ? From Pearl Harbor Day, I spent myself as a most patriotic soldier for my mother country. But four years later, Japan lost the war. I came back to Nara Prefecture and took up farming. At that time, it was the most miserable day for me, you know. However, one day, General MacArthur 
the supreme commanding officer of the occupied forces, you know. I went up to Tokyo, and I got off my train at the Shibuya railroad station. And I went out at the front of the station. I saw there an American was handing out a leaflet, you know, to the passers-by. When I passed by him, he gave me one. I saw this pamphlet. That was the story of the sailor's truck, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a startling title. I was a war prisoner of Japan, you know. This I uh, read over. And this inspired me, you know, yes. to get a Bible. You know. I never <laughs> read the Bible. At that time, I was 47 years old. And uh, during my 47 years, I had uh, never heard the name of Jesus, you know. I was uh, really lost, lost one. Right. But his story inspired me to get a Bible. And I bought a copy of the Bible, and I too read it to pages eagerly every day. One day, I was reading the Bible. I came to the Gospel of Luke, 2334. Jesus was hanging on the cross, nailed to the cross, you know. And he prayed, you know, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Right at that moment, he came into my heart. You know, so. <laughs> I clearly understood what Jesus had done on the cross. He died for me too. Yes, amen. Right away, I accepted him, my personal savior, you know. Then, he transformed me, you know. I was a <clears throat> sinner, but he praised me, you know. Yes. And I accepted him as my personal savior. Since then, I dedicated the balance of my life to serve them, to serve for him, you know. This is my story, how this typical Japanese military officer became a Christian. But you know, it is no secret what God can do. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Today we are talking to two men that will always be in history. The leading of the bombers to Pearl Harbor and General Doolittle's raiders over Japan. And yet these two men sit here today as children of the heavenly king. And our desire is those in this world in which we live that have strife and have hatred and do not have love one for another in the home, in the community, in the world, may also come to a saving knowledge of our Lord and experience what these fine men have experienced. They are children of the King. And we will not only live here loving one another, loving our fellow man, and even praying for our enemies like Jesus did at the cross, but also we are going to live together in eternity forever. And today we are going to pray for those of you that need the same Christ and the same work of grace that we've been talking about today. Shall we pray? Mm. Precious Holy Spirit, thou art so welcome. Welcome to come into the heart and into the life of these who have hatred and strife and trouble and disappointment. And Lord, we pray somehow that they may open their hearts as we have to find that God is love that Jesus Christ so loved that he came into the world and died on a cross, that we might be saved from our sins and become children of the Lord, then that we might live with you forever in eternity. Give us love one for another and love for God. 
and let an experience take place in many hearts and lives even now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.